Aus England, Primetime, Matthew Edgar! ist jemand, der vor allem, vor allem im letzten Jahr sehr auf sich aufmerksam gemacht hat. Er ist die aktuelle 49 der Weltrangliste. Er stand im Achtelfinale des Grand Slam und den UK Open. Er ist Sieger von zwei Players Championship Turnieren und der World Master von 2017. Aus Warschau, The Polish Eagle, Krzysztof Ratajski. Des Abends ist der Kirkulator, Mr. Kirk Bevins. Well, now the weekend can start. Friday night on the European Tour. First event of 2019, and we have some exciting matches to come this evening. Pretty exciting to start with Matthew Edgar getting himself a prime time spot up against the three time Pro Tour winner, a former world master in Christopher Tyske. Still to come tonight, we have the likes of Jeffrey Devine and Josh Payne there meet next. Kim Hybrex, Glenn Durant's European Tour debut, Dimitri Vandenberg, Steve Beaton against Raymond Van Barneveld and former Euro Tour winner Vincent van der Voel. That's all coming up tonight. And Dan Dawson will be in the commentary box later. But for now, joining me, Chris Murphy, is Paul Nicholson. You were a fully paired up member of Edgar TV, Paul. <laughs> I don't know if I fully paired up. I did sneak a peek at his uh, Edgar TV on tour thing uh, uh, coming to Germany yesterday it's it's different and you know what I feel about things in Dartmouth anything that's different is good when he says sneak a peek you mean you watch two minutes of the six minute video that he put out there how do you know Absolutely. not stomach anymore I certainly couldn't <laughs> I, I do find it a little bit, you know, no, a required taste, let's put it that way. But the thing about Matt is that he's never been short of confidence and he believes in his own ability. And I think to do some of the things that he's done in his life, that makes it on a dartboard, you've got to have confidence. And uh, like I say, I applaud anything that's a little bit different. And I think tonight he's been given a very tough, tough task. And he's up for it by the looks of it. If this is the way we're going to go all the way through Friday night, then, yeah, you might want to not press that pause button or go to any other streaming site. Keep it at PDC TV. This could be good. Crowd has multiplied significantly after the afternoon session. Edgar doing the right thing there, stepping back after a, an absolute flyer. So it's closer to tops than the treble. He was looking at something... Like a fly buzzing around. 57, just W192. Not even entertaining the bullseye. Sometimes it's hard to see where Christoph's looking. Steely eyed. And he didn't want to go bullseye for 10 and double 16 because Christoph goes for double 16 every chance he gets. Edgar will explode if he hits this. Sixty. Well, bearing in mind where his previous attempt at treble 20, that was like a switch from Edgar, so far below the treble. Concerning signs, but a weird first leg in which hit a 180, but then threw some dart so far away from the treble that, well, even I'd be disappointed with, with those, and Ratajski cleans up on double 10. Well, maybe the star of Edgar TV 
has his problem right there. Consistency. And we've said that about a few players already today. The thing about Matt is that he has made a quarter-final on the Pro Tour this year. The very Pro Tour that Glenn Durant went on and won. We have got Glenn to look forward to this evening. 100. But he hasn't qualified for any of the other European Tour events after this one. So he's got to find some form, find some consistency if he's going to kick forward with his career. He doesn't want to 85. find himself you know, having to go back to Q school again and having to start from scratch. That's not what players like Matt want to do. They want to start making progress. 96. Yeah, it actually makes this a bigger match for him, doesn't it? Knowing that he's not in the next three. If this was event four and he knew that the qualifiers were coming up for the following ones, then it would be a different mental approach. 60. He knows that he kind of needs to earn some ranking money here in Leverkusen. Yeah, that's absolutely right, Chris, because having four qualifiers before the first event has even started, it ramps the pressure on the players, especially when you're one of those players who wants to progress or they want to get closer to the likes of the match play, likes of the Grand Prix later in the year. It makes having a good start to the season even more important. But a ton now in front of Edgar. No need to bother with two double tops, which is why he opted for treble 16, but didn't get near that. Looked to me like he was going for treble eight. He's had a couple of flyers in this game already. I think Wojtyski is in the end of this leg already. 16 then. It's a good guy for Matt. He's yeah, it perfectly. I think it's important it's Chris to throw first. Game as commentators, Chris, to say to the folks at home what is a good lie. Because for Matt, because his dart is so flat, when he gets the outside where that double 16, he can slide it alongside like that. That was perfect. With Christoph, and it's the reason I bring this up, it's very hard to understand what's a good lie for him. It's almost like he doesn't have a blocker dart. He doesn't have a way of building a score. He just sees a colour and throws toward it. 59. Well, he threw close to the colour with each of those three darts, but couldn't find the treble with any of them. Edgar with another one here, could apply some pressure. You and I both know, Chris, that dark players in the world have stars on their shirts, very much like footballers, uh, for their teams, to see how many world championships they've won. Well, by my count, Matt's got five stars on the back of his shirt. I don't remember any world titles. Well, if you head to his social media account, Edgar described himself as a 25% world champion. And I'm not sure that the arithmetic behind that equation, but... Maybe it's something we can ask him over the course of the weekend. 1 4 2 here. Bullseye. Yeah, in that spot, I think that is a seasoned clear. Because if you don't get the ball, you can lay up easily for tops and force the pressure on Ratajski. Good playing from Matthew Edgar. He's going to get the chance to draw first blood in this first round match. Tops for a break. Double ten. That becomes double five. Scratching around, chasing the doubles and not finding any of them. These are the kind of chances that Ratajski gobbles up. And slide this dart just over the top of that one. That's in. Double eight. Eight. We disappointed after giving himself five. a great chance. This five is no gimme. Nicely done. You can often tell with the first start how central it is in the big part of the single number. And Edgar pulled it off and does get that break of throw. Mentioned some of his achievements, Paul. He's won Challenge Tour events in both 2014 and 2017. And in that quarter-final run that you mentioned, he did beat Dave Chisnell as well, who's been in fine form this year. So, yeah, that is a proper win. And after that, he beat Adrian Gray 6-0. I mean, Adrian came through Q School, of course. He's had a half-season start to 2019. 
but to beat anybody 6-0, especially somebody in the last 16 who's obviously had a decent day. 57. That's brilliant. His, his confidence must have been absolutely flying after beating Chisholm. Well, Edgar did also reach the last 16 at the last European Tour event of 2018, 56. beating Joe Cullen, who's usually a very accomplished player on the Euro Tour stage. Yeah, of course, that was in Göttingen. And he would love to be back in Göttingen quite a few oh, months oh, time because that's where the European Championship is going to be. He's there. Obviously, he's had a pretty good European Tour season. 137. Yeah, the Euro Tour, so important for qualifying for all events, but it's the only way to qualify for the European Championship in qualifying for this. Edgar had six five wins against both Willie O'Connor and Devin Peterson. As he looks for another one in there. And now the ball. 90. I think that's what you call a good miss. Won't be if Ratajski gets 86. He get the ball. He can't. Give it a good rattle though. Well, he got closer, but he's ended up worse off. And Edgar can open up a two-leg lead. Well, the thing about Matt Edgar is he can make you dizzy. He plays at a very fast pace. When he gets his rhythm going, he doesn't hang around. And he's one of those players where you have to physically stop yourself from being embroiled in a quick game. Players like Ricky Evans and Yella Klaassen are perfect examples of this. If you're a deliberate player like Ratajski is, you can find yourself speeding up and not even knowing it. It can take you out of your comfort zone. Now, Ratajski hasn't had a brilliant start of the season but we are judging him on very high standards based on how he finished 2018. Yeah, back-to-back -to -back players' championship wins without a tour card, let's not forget. This is his first season as tour card holder in the PDC. Oh, that's ludicrous, isn't it, when you say that? Considering how much we've seen him on the European tour and on the Pro Tour in the last couple of years, that is a ridiculous statistic. Yeah, he bookended the season with wins, didn't he? At one in the no, UK Open three. qualifiers and then two in the last two players' championship events of the year. Of course, emerged really on the Euro Tour in 2017, had loads of brilliant runs, reached the quarterfinals of the Dutch Darts Masters that year. Now then, would have been one for the YouTube reel. I reckon that was in the 60 if the first dart wasn't. Great first dart from Matajski. Aggressive second dart. Now he's got the ball again. He rattles the 25 once more. And Edgar sitting on tops. Got to go to the right. Now he's got might have to go left. You can see from that camera angle, he was completely blocked. Rotajski didn't get a chance to tidy up the 25 in the previous leg, having missed the ball. Now, he gets two darts at double eight. Needs both. And finds the double with neither. He wasn't missing those back in October and November. Matthew Edgar needs to find this tops. He's blocked again. He needs to find a gap. He is livid with himself, but he's only got himself to blame because he needed to look to the right-hand side and find a gap. He felt like he could force it in, and it was impossible to do so. Talking to himself for Tyson, no he sure. misses. So Edgar this time has another target. Double ten. I think he was thinking about going for tops again. Well, next to it is double five, and somehow... 15. Tried to find it, and this is just one of those... Legs that you want to forget. But it might be one that we look back and remember because Edgar should be almost home and host in the match. If Ratajka can find double two, yeah, which he has, he's only one leg between them. 
had to be on the third dart as well, didn't it? They sting a bit when your opponent steals a leg off you on the third one. dart. No hesitation for Matt straight to the hockey. Here's one for you, Murph. When you're no, writing no. your articles for the PDC and you're constantly using the word hockey, you get tired of autocorrect making it ache. Yes. Just, well, just someone's going to be aching after this. Just the red underline as well can be quite annoying. There are a few words in darts that do that. Anything in particular? Sometimes difficult to work out which is the correct way to write the word bullseye. 134. Ratajski, that's another one. The dart should have its own language, a bit like Klingon. This be another thing for our referee on the stage there, Kirk Bevins, to study. He's already a master of darting linguistics and train spotting linguistics. There he is, the Kirk Elater. Whether this one gets Michael Smith, which these guys will probably feel. But if they're going to get Bully Boy, it's probably a good time to get him. Double 16 to restore that two leg lead. Finds it. Once again, like the first leg, just slid that second double 16 shot right next to that guide, and it worked really well. I think that was a very important shot for Matt. It was because a good recovery, yeah, yeah, from the previous leg. And. Would be a big win for him. We said the importance 92. of this match for him in particular. Ratajski has qualified for two out of the four European Tier events for which qualifiers have been held. So he will get another go in the coming weeks. But Edgar needs to really rack up some prize money here. You mentioned, Paul, that he's got the habit of making players feel dizzy in the hockey, but he didn't have that effect on you, did he, very much? I just scoured the archive for your head-to-head -head stats and a 4-1 advantage to the assets. Yeah, the... The one time he beat me, he played very, very well. And I think it was in the last 16, wasn't it? That's something. It was the most recent time, back in 2015, at a UK Open qualifier. Yeah, that was that was a very good game, and Matt really deserved that win. Mind you, the one we played in Hildesheim, I, I, I gave him a bit of a... a bit of a tousling that day. He played really, really well. 83. Looking a bit Irish today, any Matt, with these new shirts. Yeah, it's uh, he's having a belated St. Patrick's Day. An interesting shirt, like the front doesn't belong with the sleeves. 80 for Ratajski, plenty of time to do it. And he's going to need a little more of that. Uh, his doubling has been, well, say not the best. Probably. 15% on doubles for Ratajski is... He, he could get better in his sleep most days. I'm not sure what, he was, what was going through his mind there, but he had to reset himself. That's a good guide. Hasn't used it. That's an excellent dart. Look how central that was from the Polish Eagle. The second Eagle in a row that we've seen, because the German Eagle, he and Artur, for him at the end of the afternoon session. Fortunately, he was taken out by Wesley Blasia. But his return to the European Tour was unsuccessful. And hopefully, we'll see more of him in the coming months. We were just having a, a giggle off the air, weren't we, Murph, about Steve Beaton, who we'll see later on with Rim van Barneveld. They're undoubtedly taken centre stage. But Steve Beaton's pro to our form is. is Kind of ordinary, and then he's qualified for all four European tour events. Well, kind of ordinary in the sense that it's kind of you to say it's ordinary, it's worse than that. <laughs> Nothing ordinary about that from Ratajski, but yes, we mentioned the, the pressure that comes with having these four qualified no, before the first event, but none of that for Steve Beaton has qualified for the lot. And he is a man who knows how to qualify for TV events, that's for sure. And he's decided this year that the European tour is the way to do it. He's not wrong. 94. 
the beaten Barney battle coming up in the penultimate match of the night. Stay tuned for that. Go on, who do you fancy for that one? Well, we'll come back to that at the end of this leg because you made a point that might be synonymous with it. As Wataishkate goes up for tops. Had trouble on this double before. 71. Well, Matthew's the kind of guy that when he hits a big shot, he will celebrate. We have imploded of you to hit that 164. He has squared it up just in case Christopher has some more trouble. He doesn't. And it's a level game. This one is tough to call. And a much bigger crowd tonight than we had this afternoon. What a boisterous folk outside the Osterman Arena here in Leverkusen before we started. And almost the precursor to what will be a sensational Saturday. Never fails to deliver this tournament. Because let's not forget, there's no one was here. Just to be in Dusseldorf, which was probably, if you spoke to a hundred of the top pros over the last few years, they would say that was their favourite. They loved it there. But when it was moved here, people were sceptical. But very quickly, when we came here a couple of years ago, people fell in love with the place. Well, to return to the point quite poetically, Raymond van Barneveld was the first winner back in 2012. And you mentioned about Michael Smith facing the winner of this match and saying it might be a good game for whoever does come through, presumably because of Smith's injury problems, perhaps a bit of fatigue with the Premier League roadshow going on. I think that plays into Beaton's hands tonight as well because Michael Smith has got tonight off, but Remo van Barneveld is straight from Berlin to Leverkusen to play tonight, having played in the Players' Championships as well last week, which he hadn't been doing in previous years. And having flown home from Berlin to the Netherlands, then driving here, which I think was potentially a little foolish. But no way to say what to do. He's the one who's winning at the minute. Well, Ratajski is on the verge of winning here and turning this tie around. And could go back to that fifth leg where Edgar missed all those darts at double. And that might prove to be the pivotal point in this match. This is a tough dart. That was a very, very covered bed. And that's exactly what happened to Matt earlier. This is a game changer. This is huge. This is tops. And it was nowhere near. It hit a 20, but it hit the metal piece. That was a flyer. A little bit of adrenaline from Matt. And he couldn't finish it off. And now Ratajskate, and this is often his modus operandi, isn't it? He kind of lands the killer blows and the big punches. And he's done it again. And to add insult to injury, does it last start in hand? Uh, again when Edgar thought he was going to get another chance. The thing is, he can't see he didn't have a chance. He put that dart in the 60, that dart in the single. There was nothing in the way of that tops. He just threw a poor dart. Unfortunately, from 4-2 up, Tyson has found the answers. Well, he had nine chances to lead 4-1. Matt Edgar did recover from that well, but he's let that lead slip. And now, in need of a hold, followed by a break. Or it will be an interesting interview with himself later on. Maybe that's something I will tune in for. Yeah, Ratajski's no, not, not the kind of player to show nerves or any sort of emotion during a match. He, he does have this characteristic celebration when no, he wins a tight match of putting two fists up parallel to each other. It was very evident when he had that classic against Gerwin Price at Minehead back in November. What a game that was. 97. But when he was at Lakeside supporting his partner, Karolina Podgorska, he never seemed so nervous and all the time I've been watching him. He looked like a, you know, a bag of cats about to be thrown at the river. I've heard that quite a lot from professional darts players, though they'd rather be on the man on the stage and the man supporting the man on the stage. It's a lot easier to play than it is to watch. Because you're in control, you're, you can do something about it. Well, Edgar's in control here. But not anymore, he now has to rely on Ratajski's miss. And he could have left himself handier there, and he plugged away in the 20 segment, but 
Let's see if it even matters because Ratajski is a third of the way to finishing. I'm trying to see if he's a 33% winner there. Well, Matt Edgar could have had 100% of his darts at double. Was that in? It made an impression. Looked like it was. That was really odd. Perhaps connected with the bottom part of the wire. The stanchion of the double 16. And Ratajski, will he punish again with a final dart? It's not the final dart of this match. There may be a final twist. He is having some sort of a, an argument with double 10 right now. But double eight comes to the rescue of Edgar. And now Edgar has to find one more break of throw. Ratajski, on the other hand, one more hold. But he's had match darts. He's squandered. And they are shots that he wasn't missing last year. Thanks has effectively handed the baton to Matthew Edgar. Yeah, just don't drop it. 100. Taking his time, resetting himself, big moments coming up. He only mustered up 41 with his opening salvo. But that goes somewhere to restoring that visit. Yeah, that's what you want when you have a poor start. Beautiful last dart from Edgar to keep himself in touch. He knows that from 310, he gets two 60s. He's going to be on, he should be on a 170. He might need them. He is going to need them. But he needs two perfect darts now. He hasn't found a treble at all. Advantage to the Polish Eagle. You were offered this scenario before this game started, you would have taken it. Six starts from 181 in the last leg to get it done, you would take it. Well, again, you feel that a 140 is minimum here. Six. And he hasn't even left to finish it's after two treble turns. So Ratajski now homing in on a second round meeting with Michael Smith. Tops for the match. Six, and he's six. left on double 10 again. Go on, Matt, if you put pressure on here, it's not a gimme. Yes, he's had a tiff with 10s throughout this match. It'd be a rare occasion where he might like to see the first start go inside if it misses. But he's happy to see it go in. Well, a fantastic opener for this evening's session at the European Darts Open. Edgar had plenty of chances, but in the end, Christoph Ratajski moves through to the second round. He'll face Michael Smith tomorrow. We'll be back with a matchup between Jeffrey Desvan and Josh Payne in a few moments' time. But in match one, Ratajski beats Edgar 6-5. Wir sagen herzlichen Glückwunsch, Christoph Ratajski. Christoph, it's not very often that you can win a match in the PDC with a double percentage below 20%. 20, it was 10, 20 percent on the double? Below 20 percent. No, it, was, it wasn't good, I know. But of course, it's, uh, the finish was good. I won and I'm happy from this. So just, just happy to be through, basically. Next round, uh, it's Michael Smith, the bully boy. You played him three times. You beat him once already. Can you do it again? I hope so. I hope uh, this game will be different, this, this, this one. Uh, for example, these doubles, I hope it will be better because, it, you know, it, it wasn't good. Da, er, er, er sagte eben, das ist nicht häufig, dass man mit unter 20% Doppelquote ein Spiel gewinnt bei der PDC. Er weiß, es war nicht gut. Er ist froh, dass er heute äh, ja, quasi mit dem Sieg davon gekommen ist. In der nächsten Runde spielt er gegen den Bullyboy Michael Smith. Da weiß er, da muss er ja, zwei, drei Schippen drauflegen, um da bestehen zu können. Hat ihn schon einmal geschlagen. Wir wünschen in der zweiten Runde viel Glück. Sagen danke, Christoph Ratajski.